Hi folks, in this video tutorial, I'm going to look at Spring Boot with Spring MVC, JPA, Hibernate and MySQL. I'm going to look at one of the previous tutorials we did without Spring Boot. Basically the RESTful web service tutorial and the web app tutorial that were using Spring MVC, JPA, Hibernate and MySQL. And I'm going to convert that to use Spring Boot. So firstly, the Spring Boot will define the POM file, POM.xml file, which is used by the Maven with all the Spring Boot related dependencies. The easiest way to get that dependency is going to Spring Initializer website. So it's basically HTTPS start.spring.io and you can pick the group and also the artifact. I'm going to leave them as it is because I'm going to modify the existing application to Spring Boot. So I'm only interested in what's in the pom.xml file. But if you are building a brand new Spring Boot from scratch, I'll recommend come in and fill all these details and it will automatically give you a skeleton. And then you can import, which will, you can download a zip file. And once you download the zip file, you can import that into Eclipse as an existing Maven file. So I'm going to go here into the dependencies and I'm interested in web. So I'm going to type in web. So full stack web developments. I'm going to select that. So it says I have selected the web. I'm going to do um, JPA. So I'm going to select JPA here. And then I'm going to use MySQL database. So I need the MySQL database driver. So I'm going to use the MySQL and it's going to select that. I'm going to check here what else I need. So if, I, if you look at here, so I also need the REST repositories. So I go back in here and click REST, type in REST. And I'm going to get the REST repositories and that's all I need. And then I can click on generate project and it's going to allow you to download. I've already downloaded this. You can save this. It's going to be the demo.zip file. So if I go to the demo.zip file here, you can see inside the demo, the pom.xml file. It has even added the .git igno. Then you have the normal Maven structure, source main Java. Then it got source main resources. So if it is a brand new, it also put an application.properties file, which is you will be entering the spring application properties for the database connections for the hibernate properties and so on so if you are building a brand new project you can easily import this into eclipse and then start writing your classes and filling in the application properties and so on but in this case i'm only interested in the pom.xml file so i open the pom.xml file and i have already copied that into my pom.xml file here and we'll quickly go through that. So basically it is importing a parent, so which is the Spring Boot starter parent. And we're using release 1.56 and we're adding some properties, which is a 1.8. And there are other properties here. So you may ask in sometimes you may have a parent pump, company-wide parent pump. In scenarios where you have a company-wide parent pump, you can't use a Spring Boot starter parent. In that case, you can use it as a bill of material pump, Spring bill of material pump. And you uh, you can import uh, use that as a dependency here and you will be extending the parent pump of your company-wide parent pump, whatever you have. So you might be defining the versions and so on. So in here, inside the dependencies, we're having a dependency for the data JPA. So JPI is an interface and then we call JPI will make call to Hibernate as an implementation we're going to use here. Then we're going to use RESTful web service repositories we're going to use. Then you need a starter data REST. Then Spring Boot starter web. So all these are like Spring Boot starter as a prefix and then you have data JPI, data REST and web. This is a Spring MVC web. And when you bring in the Spring MVC web, it will also bring in an embedded Tomcat, which makes it easier to run and debug your application. And then once you're happy with it, 
then you can build up the WAR file and you can deploy to an external Tomcat. But by default, you have an embedded Tomcat and you can run it as a normal application, which we'll see pretty soon. And the packaging here we're going to use is a JAR, which is a Java archive packaging. And then we need to add some additional dependencies is because we are use, going to use JSP as the web technology. So which needs Tomcat embed Jasper and we need JSTL, which is for the JSTL tags will be used in the JSP. And normally if you don't put a final name, when you build a WAR file or a JAR file, it'll come up with a name as the project. So in this case, it'll come as simple hyphen ORM persistence.jar. You can override that with providing a name here. So I'm here overriding that with the final name being simple web as opposed to simple ORM persistence.jar. And then there's another additional plugin that I'm adding because I'm going to use the jar. I need a Uber jar. So it needs to contain all the other dependency jars. So because this, all these starter test and start connector Java and all these starter web will be recursively bringing in a lot of other dependencies. And all these jars need to be included in all, all the contents of these jars need to be included into one big jar, which is called the Uber jar. And this plugin will allow you to add all everything into one jar file. I also forgot to mention this. We also have a dependency to connect to the MySQL database. This is the driver and we are using this as a runtime because we don't need this driver to compile, but we need it when the application is running, which is a runtime. And this scope is test, which is mainly required for testing purpose, which is a Spring Boot task, uh, starter test. And then all these provided means, basically we only need it for compiling but we are not required when we really run it because the Tomcat will provide this dependency. And if we don't provide any scope, the default is um, compile. That means the dependency is required for us to compile the code. So once the pom.xml file uh, is out of the way, we got all the Spring Boot dependencies. You can go to the project and I can click on Maven and then say update project. And you can go into the uh, dependencies here. So if I go into Maven dependencies, you can see all the dependencies, the just a few. So we only mentioned, uh, that's the power of Spring Boot. So if you don't use Spring Boot, you got to bring in all the dependencies individually. And how do you know like what to bring in? So you need to know quite a few of those dependencies you need to bring in. If you look at one of the previous RESTful web service or the web app applications that we built, you will see far more dependencies than what we have here. And Spring Boot really simplifies it by allowing you to say, okay, I want JPA, I want RESTful web service, I want web. So you specify a very high level requirements and then it will automatically bring in everything required for that. And the Spring Initializer is a very good place to start because you know what you're going to build. So you say I want web, I want security, I want actuator. So actuator is mainly if you want any metrics in your application, you can bring in the actuator. So if I type in actuator here, and then you can bring in the actuator and you can generate it and it automatically generates a POM file. So now we we'll go back here and look at some of these dependencies. You get, if not hundreds, there'll be 50, 60 dependencies here. And the key one, one of the key ones to notice is an embedded Tomcat. So you will see an embedded Tomcat. Here it is. Tomcat embedded WebSocket and Spring Boot starter Tomcat. So the Tomcat is embedded into it, make the testing and debugging easier. So now we have got this and we'll quickly go through the uh, other layers. And also another thing I want to mention is, if you go into Spring IO guides, the guides will give you a lot of examples about how to get started. For example, in this case, we're going to use the MySQL driver. So I type in MySQL because that's the one we are going to use as a database. 
and here accessing data with MySQL. So I click on it and it's going to give me some sample code and some guidelines as to how to build it. So if you're using Git, it'll tell you how to clone. You can get some examples from the Git repository itself and have a look. And also it gives you a bit about how to build with Gradle, how to build with Maven and so on. And also it shows you, you need to fill up the application.properties file for the MySQL and you got to fill in these uh, details about uh, DDL, the URL, data source URL, the username and password required for the data source and so on. And it will also give you a sample example of creating a model where you can annotate it. And this is for the Hibernate and then Hibernate will make a connection with the database and you can retrieve the data. So there's an example here. So now let's get back to our example and let's start looking at application.properties is where in the source main resources folder this is where you'll be specifying all the connection details. You don't have to have a table ready so you need to have a database. So this is a database JDBC MySQL localhost the learn Java DB. And here, the model I'm going to use, if you look into the comma editor model, account.java is the model. This is very similar to the model that we used in the previous successful JPA tutorials. So you have at entity annotation, you have at table and saying yes, should be a table called account. ID is the primary key. And we got some parameters, ID, name and balance. And in the application that properties file, I've commented this out because the very first time you run it, you uncomment and run it. So it's automatically is going to create a table called account in the database called learn Java DB. But the subsequent times you want to comment it out because every time otherwise the data you already have will be lost. It's going to create a new table for you. So after you have created it once, which is a handy thing because you don't have to write the DDL to create it. It will automatically create the DDL for you and it will create the table for you. And subsequent times you comment it and run it again because table is there. You don't have to recreate the table again. And the properties you are interested in spring data source URL. So that will give you the link how to connect to the MySQL database. This is the username and password we are using. And then we are going to use the Tomcat data source. So we already looked at a data source it will allow you to have a pool of connections because when multiple users will be coming through multiple threads via the web container you will fork out a connection to each thread so you need multiple connections so we are going to use the data source that's within the tomcat then we need the hibernate properties this is we are saying we are going to use the mysql dialect and it's saying to generate new mappings or not we are set it to false here format SQL to true so that it will show you the SQL so you can see it on the Tomcat's console, uh, the log, uh, what SQLs are getting generated by Hibernate. Then you can also debug SQL, you can set it to debug so this will show the SQL as well. And we also put it to trace so we'll get more information when Hibernate is running. So once you have the application dot properties, we got the model account dot Java that maps to the model. Next, we will go to the um, DAO layer. So the DAO layer here is very similar to the previous tutorials where we did. We have an interface here. The interface is having a number of methods: get account, save account, and get account. That is, you pass an ID, you'll get one account. Save account is from the form you will capture the new account details and map that to the account and then that gets saved to the database and get accounts will get all the accounts from the database. So now we have seen the account interface. Let's look at the account dimple. In the account dimple, you are saying this is a repository and this is the same as defining as add component. So it's saying it's a spring component. So it can be dependency injected into the service layer. Add transactionals to say that spring will manage the transaction. And here the entity manager. So in one of the previous tutorials, we had a util class and we had the persistence.xml and so on. When you use Spring Boot, you don't need the persistence.xml file. In the application.properties file, we have defined all the JDBC and Hibernate properties, not the JDBC, sorry, the database connectivity properties 
and the hibernate properties and here the entity manager you just annotate with at persistence context and then here are the different methods so first one is em.create query we are doing select a from account a that means select all the accounts and it will return a list of accounts the next method is save account you pass an account and it will persist to the database and you say return, return true means it has persisted succeeded and then there's another query you pass the id which is a primary key account id and it will do a select query for that id and it will return just one account so that's the day or layer all the code that is used here is provided in the link below that will give you step by step everything so including the code so you can try it and also with bare minimum explanation um, so this video tutorial and this post step by step will complement each other in practicing um, Spring Boot all the way with um, Spring MVC, JPA and Hibernate. If you find this a little bit difficult, um, that means you haven't done any of the previous tutorials. So once you have done simple tutorials on RESTful Web Service, JPA, setting up Eclipse, Maven and so on, this tutorial must be a lot easier to follow. And let's go back and have a look at the service layer. So we have done the uh, day or layer and I'm going to look at the service layer. So service layer is basically a wrapper. Normally service layer will have business logic. In this case, we are keeping it simple. So all the service layer is going to do is, it's going to inject the day or layer and then call the day or layer to get the data. So we define the account of service, which is an interface, save methods, get accounts, return a list of accounts, save account, text an account and save it to the database uh, via the DAO and get account will get in one account by the ID and if you look at the implementation all it does is it defines as a service is same as at component annotation this is basically a spring annotation to say this can be injected into the controller we will look at the controller next and here it is auto wired the account DAO is basically the account DAO is injected so basically it will inject any account DAO implementation that got the um, repository annotation and also which implements this particular interface so basically account day ordered impl that which we looked at earlier gets injected here and we'll be making the call say get account save account and get account by the idn now let's look at the controller we got two controllers one controller is to demonstrate the restful web service the other controller is for the ui so let's look at the RESTful Web Service Controller. So it's annotated with address controller. And then we got the request mapping saying anything with the URI V1 forecasting will come into this controller. And we are dependence injecting the account service because account service will then use the account DAO and then account DAO will make use of the entity manager and via Hibernate it will go to the database and get the data. So we're going to get the list of accounts. So we're calling the account service to get accounts that will return a list of accounts. So that's all. So we are doing a request mapping and it's accounts. So anything with V1 forecasting accounts will come into this method and will go to the database and get the accounts. So let's, this is the RESTful web service uh, controller. And let's look at the controller that we use for the web app. So which is called the UI controller. So the UI controller is same. So instead of annotating with address controller we are annotating with just at controller which is a web app controller and the request mapping is ui so anything with ui accounts will come into this method and we are also injecting the account service because we need the account service to go via account dio and go to the database and get the data so here we are setting up the model view and we are saying accounts this is saying we are going to use the accounts or jsp page this accounts or JSP page is very similar to the Spring Web App Tutorial, Spring MVC Web App Tutorial we did before. Then it's going to get the accounts and it's going to set it to the model and then the view will come and get the data out of the model and it will populate the view. Similarly, display form is used for displaying an empty form so you can fill up the account details. And then we are going to go to the um, so that's all it does so it returns the form and when you click on the click button new account 
is going to come here and it's going to save it's going to get the account details whatever you so this displays an empty form and when you click on submit it'll come in here and then it'll pick up the values the user entered in the form and it's going to go to the account service uh, sorry it's going to go to the account service and save the account first and then it gets all the list of accounts back and then finally you pass in the account details account ID that means you click on the link with a particular ID and it's going to go to the database and get the details of one particular account so that's what this controller does so this controller is very much similar to the previous tutorial that we did with the Spring MBC same is the RESTful web service controller as well now let's look at the JSP pages so that will be under source main web app web inf views and will be in here so when we look at the JSP pages it's important that we look at it has been already configured as well so if you look at the config the other web initializer config I have removed it so it's no longer required for the spring boot but we need this simple web configuration here so that we can bootstrap our view resolver so we're going to use the JSP as a view resolver so if we are saying the view resolver the JSP pages will be under web in views folder and it will have the suffix of .jsp and we are saying enable web MVC and you are also annotating with that configuration and also we are doing a component scan so it can scan and find the relevant components like the repository the service the data layer and so on so we need everything anything with com.mytutorial to look under these packages for the relevant um, annotation like um, in the at controller we have at controller as controller so it will look up all those annotations and all those controllers service and the day or layers will be automatically wired that's what called the dependency injection they will be all the dependencies will be resolved and wired up So if you look at the JSP pages, the accounts JSP page is what it displays all the accounts. I'm not going to go into details, which we have covered in one of the previous tutorials. And then you also have account details will display just the account detail and also have a new account that will just display an empty form to capture the new account details. And another important thing with the Spring Boot app is I've already mentioned that there's an embedded Tomcat. So the all you have to do, so I'll close all this file, close all. There's an app.java that we added inside the com.mytutorial. So if I look at the app.java, all it has is this called at Spring Boot application annotation. And then you do this is the app class and it extends the Spring Boot servlet initializer. So this initializer and the code here is required only if you want to package this up and deploy it on an external wall. But if you're going to run it internally, then you don't need this um, Spring Boot initializer and this particular line of code. All you need is just public static void main, spring application dot run, and this app dot class is this class here. And you just put the args here. If you pass any args via this main method, that gets passed here. So there are a number of different ways you can run this application. So firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my MySQL database server. So the, the way you start is MySQL daemon hyphen hyphen console. So that start the database here. Once this database is started, I'm going to open a client and quickly show the table that we already have there. So if I, this is the table, so I've already here. So if I go into MySQL and describe the account, this ID, balance, and name, and this is the account table here. And primary key is the ID, which is of type Vacha, and the balance is of type decimal, and name is of type Vacha. So this table was initially created automatically because we all, uh, in the application.properties file, I ran it the first time with DDL create uncommented. So it has created it. Now I'm commenting it because I already have a table with some data in it. If I go and run it again, it's going to delete all the data, drop those tables, and you're going to create another table. So the way to connect to MySQL is here. MySQL hyphen user 
and in this case I think it's user123 hyphen p for password uh, sorry it should be mysql I missed the y and put the password as pwd123 so this is the client basically connecting to the mysql daemon server that's running here so via the client I can execute a lot of SQL queries so I'm going to first say use the table that we are using uh, the database sorry is called the learn Java DB so I'm going into the MySQL command line prompt and I am going to say use that particular table so I'm going to you do paste here and semicolon say so this database has changed to that particular database now if I go and do select star from account so account is a table inside the database learn java db and i have one row which is called id 111 balance 256 dollars and six cents and name is john so now my sql database daemon is running you don't have to start any tomcat or anything like that so all i have to do now here is go to this app.java so this is where the spring boot magic so one is the pom.xml file is much simplified you only bring in a few dependencies and everything else is brought in automatically uh, via the transitive dependencies and then I have to set up the app.java and now I right click on it and I can say run as Java application and then you will see the Spring Boot application will just start like that and it is starting up now so you can say Spring Boot release version 1.56 May take a few seconds to start up so while it's starting keep an eye out for any errors so it has already started so started app in 16.879 seconds it's running in port 8080 so I go to the browser now and firstly I'm going to hit the controller that gives you the restful web service which is going to return a JSON data so I'm going to say version 1 forecasting accounts so if I click on this refresh this again So it's saying no, there's no explicit mapping for this particular version. Yes, I know why it is. So I have to take the simple web out because this is running with an embedded version. So everything starts with there's no context there. There's localhost 8080 and then v1 forecasting accounts. So v1 forecasting accounts is what we looked up in the controller. So if I go back to the accounts controller, it's basically v1 forecasting account service so it's now v1 forecasting account service account sorry v1 forecasting accounts click enter again now I get the JSON data back so what I'm getting back is ID 111 name is John and balance is 256 which is same as what's in the data what's in the database here 111 206 and John now I'll go and Hit the next one which is the accounts UI accounts which is our web app in this case also I don't need a simple web I'm going to hit this I get the ID 111 name is John and $256.06 I'm going to add a new account I'm going to call 222 name is Peter and balances say three hundred three dollars and thirty cents I click on save it has added this two 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 Peter three hundred three dollars and thirty cents I can also go to my backend database I can do the same select star from account now we've got two entries here because it is already added to the database now I go back to my code, I click on one of these, it'll just show me the 111, name is John Balance and $256.06. It calls a UI account details and pass in as a path parameter 1111. That's what we get in the UI. If I go back to my UI controller, and I can see here, new account, account details and account ID is captured as 111 
that gets passed into account service get account ID and it returns it so this is all good and another good thing about that is it's very easy to debug as well so if I want to debug this I'll just stop here so this has stopped you can also see in the console it has already printed out because you see we have put some print line statements and also we said the hibernate to show all the queries that is generating so it shows the queries that it is sending to hibernate so if I clear this I can run this in the debug mode so I can say debug as Java application and I will go into my DAO which is the account DAO info and where it does the get accounts I'm going to put a debug point and see if it stops I think it has started now. I'll go back and rerun this, get all accounts. So it's not the new account. Let's get accounts. So presenter. So even though it, it complained about the line attribute is required, it's actually gone and stopped at the account day or the impo. So you can easily debug now Spring application. So we are basically running with an embedded Tomcat. So I would now step through. So this is step over, step return, step out, step in and so on. So if I go to the next level now, here I can see what the result is. It has already gone and taken the results from the database. So I can go in here and inspect what's in the result. I've got two accounts, basically two. They are the balance ID 111 John with the amount of $256. And the next one we just added, which is ID 222 name Peter with $303.30. So you can easily debug. And then I debug, play that through. And now I've got the balance back. So now we have seen how to run it as an embedded uh, inside Eclipse. You can also run it outside via the jar file because we already said to build a Uber jar. There's a plugin I showed you that Maven Spring Boot Maven plugin that builds the jar. So I'm going to stop this from running inside and let's go and run it from a command line. So I'm going to click back on here. This is in the debug mode here on the top right hand corner. So this way I go and select on this here and just click on the stop button. So it stops. And if you look at if I'm going to do run as and I'm going to do Maven clean and then do Maven install. So that will build the Uber Java file. And it's building the Uber Java file mainly because of this Spring Boot Maven plugin that builds that unwraps all the individual Java files that are shown here. All the Java files under this Maven dependencies here is going to unpack one by one and put them all into one big Java file and it's called the simple web.jar. So this is the plugin here. It's called Org Spring Framework Boot and it's called Spring Boot Maven plugin. So I've cleaned it and I'm going to run it now. So I'll minimize this, right click on it and say run as Maven install. Then it's going to build that inside the target. Target is empty now. So once it starts building, you will see the files get compiled first and then packaged. Now here the target just finished building. 
if you're going to drag it see you have the simple web jar if I go and right click on it and look at the properties it will be a big jar file because see it is 32 megabytes because not only all the packages and classes from my project but also all the Maven dependencies get packaged So now it has built the WAR file. So I can go into the simple web WAR files. It has already built it. So all I have to do is copy this and paste it to the Tomcat installation that I already have. So which is a C drive projects. Sorry, it's in C tools, Apache Tomcat, Apache Tomcat and inside the web apps folder which I've already copied. So once you copy the simple web.war file, when you run the Tomcat, it'll be exploded into simple web folder here. So all you have to do is go back in this command prompt, startup.bat, so that starts the Tomcat. So you can say it's bringing the Spring Boot again. So once this has started, we should be able to go in hit the accounts URL again and it should be working doesn't start it yet okay now it says started so I'm going okay so this is not going to work because now we are saying we building a building a web file and we have a simple web as the context so the URL is going to change here so I'm going to put this to simple web then everything else is going to be the same so either the simple web which is the context because you have already mentioned the final name in the pom.xml file to be a simple web and now if I go and refresh this enter now we can find the URL and we got the data back so you're going to have the simple web for the all the other URLs as well. So if you're going to hit the RESTful web service, it's going to have simple web v1 forecasting and accounts. Hit enter and you get the JSON data back. So this is how you run it in an external Tomcat and then if you want to run it internally, I can go in stop this tomcat server again so i just go and kill this and i can run it here app right click on it run as java application you can run it here or i can go and stop this and debug as and i can put debug points wherever i want to debug the application and then also i can debug the spring boot application so that's the power of Spring Boot. So it makes your dependency management easier and also it's make it, makes it easier to build rapidly by running it or debugging it as the Spring app. And when you're happy with everything, you can build it as a WAR file and you can go and deploy it to um, Tomcat and you are up and running with the Spring Boot application. So in the next tutorial I will expand on this uh, Spring Boot and also we will look at AngularJS all the way going to the Spring Boot RESTful web service um, and it is important that um, you keep in mind that debugging is very powerful here so all I have to do is I've, I've already started here so still I can run this but in this case you need to take the simple web out because I'm running with the embedded one and it works here so it gets the accounts 
and if you want to debug it now I can go in here stop this and right click on it and I'm going to say debug as Java application and I've already got a debug point in the Deo or a Deo impl wherever it gets the accounts where it gets the accounts I've got a debug point here so once this application has started Uh, don't worry about this just a warning um, it's saying I need to go into the compiler options and turn the generate line number to one let's see if I go to window preferences where's the Java compiler so this is the compiler store information preserve add source file add line numbers it's already selected and say OK and if I go and click on the refresh button here again it's in the debug mode now so it's not going to come back straight away so if you go back to my thing I ignore this error if I go back it's saying I'm going to be in the debug mode it has already taken me to the debug window here and stopping on day, uh, account day or impl dot get accounts on line number 25 and this way it stopped I want to see what's coming from this query so it hasn't executed the results yet you only have the query here so if I go step to the next it goes in here this would have automatically gone to the database because you can also see the select query hibernate has shown the correct um, the select query it has executed this query to the database and if I look at the list here you should have two entries here two entries and one is double click on it so one is the account ID 111 John 256 the second one is 2222 name Peter balance 303 so we have shown how the different ways to run it in an embedded mode and also we can build this a war file and deploy it to Tomcat as well um, so that's the power of uh, Spring Boot. It makes the whole management a lot easier. So we'll catch up in another tutorial soon.